Hello, I'm Paul Briley, and you're listening to Off the Comma. I'm a human who cares about supporting other humans. On this podcast, we'll explore all facets of what it means to feel stuck in life. We talk with people just like us who have found themselves sitting on a comma and not knowing where to go next. We'll unpack the experience with them, where they've been stuck, what it feels like, what they experienced, and what they learned. My goal is to inspire you by seeing yourself in others. I believe that when we feel more connected and seen, magic can happen. All right. Awesome. I am sitting here and I have the the pleasure of being able to interact face to face on Zoom with Hector Garcia, who also, um, like some of my other guests, is from right here in my hometown of Sacramento, California, representing the West Coast and the best coast of the U.S. And uh, we have been talking about this a little bit uh, for a minute about Hector coming on and sharing his story. So without any further ado, I am going to introduce Hector. Hector. How are you today? And introduce yourself. Tell us how you would like to be known. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Uh, how am I today? I am good. I'm happy. Also, a little bit goofy, uh, being that this feels really official. So, so yeah, I'm sensing that. And uh, just excited overall to be here. So thank you for having me. You know, as far as uh, who Hector is, professionally, I've been in sales uh, for over 10 years now uh, uh, in the sales enterprise and uh, SaaS space. Um, That's just, you know, the professional side. Who I am as a human being uh, behind that, I am a heart-centered warrior. I am a dad. I am a man who's looking to evolve uh, into the best version of himself. And more importantly, to be able to do that in order to show up best for others. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit who I am. Art centered warrior. That is powerful language, a powerful description. T- tell us a little bit more about what that means to you. Oh, man. Yeah. See, for me, heart centered means operating from that place of abundance that is the heart. And uh, truthfully, the way that message derived for me was from an ayahuasca experience, and it was really my first ayahuasca experience and just blew my heart open. And, you know, I came to realize like, man, the heart, no matter what, all the ups and downs, all the heartbreaks and the hurt, it always wants more, you mm. know, so it never gives up. And so uh, part of that is is what I mean by heart centered and really learning to operate from that space, knowing that there's always more love there. You know, there's Mm -hmm. always more, no matter how harsh and how ugly things get or how dark they are, it gets better when you pour more into that. That's, that's very descriptive. And and it sounds like it's very meaningful and personal to you. So thank you for sharing that. And I suspect we're probably going to get more into that as we get into our questions today. Before we do that, I kind of, you know, an acknowledgement that, you know, you and I haven't talked about what you're going to be sharing today. Like it's going to be a surprise to me, which is cool. There's, it's not rehearsed. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what story you have to share with us today. Before we get started, what intention do you have for our conversation today? Yeah, I wrote that down. So let me, let me look real quick. I think my intention is just to share my journey, essentially my journey of, you know, the dark night of the soul, uh, my experience in going through a divorce or a separation and how ugly and dark things got. And, and more importantly, to share with others, not just how it, it gets better, but because of that experience, I'm legitimately like a thousand percent better now because of that. So mm. that's, that's my intention. And, uh, you know, hopefully, and my, I don't know if we're getting to that, but the purpose behind that is to share that with other men, really for me, mm-hmm. uh, because that's something I've noticed and I've witnessed when other men are going through shit through the dark part of their life, call it separation, whatever that dark night of the soul is for them. I want to make sure that they know that there's someone there and they are not alone. And it does get better uh, if you do the work. So I heard a couple of things in that intention, be able to share your story, share your experience of the dark night of the soul that hopefully men in particular will hear this because you would like them to know that they're not alone, that Mm -hmm. things do change and that it can and will get better 
if they do the work. My intention is to give you space to tell that story and that people out there who are listening to this will be inspired by some of what you say and share with us, see a little bit of themselves in you and that you're able to fulfill the intention that you just shared with us. So let's jump in. Awesome. All right. I've got five questions. And so we're going to start with the first one here in just a second. And I just want to kind of, you know, anchor you in the way we do this, right? Like it's your story. I'm going to let you tell the story. There may be times though, where you say something that's very interesting or that I'd love to dig deeper into. So I might interrupt or interject uh, sometime and I might say, Hey, Hector, can I step in for a second? Or, well, can we go back to something real quick? So with your permission in advance, I'd like to, you know, kind of set that as a little bit of a ground rule for how we work in our, um, or an agreement, I should say, not a ground rule, an agreement, make an agreement with you um, that, that it's okay to do that while we get into your story. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Hector, let's start with the first question. Where have you found yourself sitting on a comma in your life? Yeah. Oof. I feel like there's always lots of commas. I saw myself sitting on a comma in my life when I was going through the separation with my kid's mom and really uh, and realizing like I didn't have a mission or a purpose. Tell us a little bit more about that. So you're going through the separation and you're realizing you don't have a mission or a purpose. What What's the significance of this experience for you? It sounds like it might have been challenging. Yeah. What I mean by that is, you know, I had given everything I, I had to that relationship and then for it to dismantle so quickly. And this is after like five years together, living together, having a kid, uh, assuming, uh, you know, uh, the relationship would always be okay. And then that uh, dissipating, like just into thin air hmm. uh, to then realizing like, okay, what, you know, they, they were my mission. They were my purpose, being a father, being a provider, you know, working towards just making sure my family had what they needed, even if it wasn't everything we, we wanted yet to then losing that. And then like, okay, well, what, I don't get it. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? So as, as a man, I think that's where I lost my sense of purpose. Not, I think I know that's, when I felt that that loss above other things, right? Going through that uh, yeah. that experience. What I think I'm hearing you say then, and and that that seems to make sense, right? Like you came to this place of not feeling like you had a purpose or a mission after having had something that felt clear to you that then went away, and now yeah. here you are. Life has changed for you, and the things that kind of represented your compass before aren't there anymore or, or aren't, don't have that same direction or that same meaning or significance. Is that, is that a fair way to summarize what you said? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I can see this was challenging for you. Obviously our listeners can't see, you know, we're, we're, we're having a face-to-face conversation with each other. This seemed challenging for you. I'll transition right into the second question, which is what did this create for you when you found yourself sitting on this comma? Yeah. I'm thinking about, man it's been years now but like what you know without see, sounding repetitive here but like what is my purpose like what is like what am i even doing here then uh, i've been working so hard it's it's interesting because as i'm going through this with you right now it's like so hard to repress the emotions i'm not one to ever repress my emotions but it's a lot of things are coming up right now mm. uh, and um you know uh, yeah like i said it was just like this is my mission this is my purpose this is what i do it's like what you're supposed to do to losing that. And then like, okay, well, what do I do now? Right. What, like, what am I supposed to do? So I don't know if I answered your question. Sorry. I got stuck in that. Right. That's, that's okay. And, and, you know, that's, that's the beauty of these conversations is like, let's just unpack it. So Mm -hmm. you said, what I heard you say is that it kind of left me with this now what? Like, it sounds like you were kind of lost in a drift. Those are my words, but it sounds like that kind of put you into a place of not knowing. Yeah. Well, the thing that I'm processing right now is I'm thinking about it again. And I have a great relationship with her now, right? My kid's mm-hmm. mom. But, but then it was just ugly. And it was just like, you know, this assumption that you're the human that I'm supposed to be with to all of a sudden like that is gone mm-hmm. overnight. Almost because she found someone else 
and it's like oh fuck uh what you know like what do i do it's just me now like yeah my god i'm a single dad oh my god like how am i gonna survive and you know a, a lot of things are yeah they're <laughs> it's funny how they're resurfacing now well, and, and you mentioned that earlier. I wanted to, you know, invite you to share anything that you feel comfortable with. You said it's bringing up some things. I heard you just describe, you know, like there were these expectations and there was this identity and it all went away just like that. What else yeah. is coming up for you? So I'm thinking about really how everything went down. So just to give some some color, some context to the audience here, when I was with my kid's mom, you know, we were living in the same house uh, under the same roof and then, you know, separated. And then two months, three months later, I found out she's dating another guy from work. And that destroyed me. Um, you know, once again, just adding more context here, like we just signed the lease. We, you know, it was like 5,000 to get out. We just moved to this town where we literally didn't have single family member or friend within at least 350 miles. So that was horrendous. It was hard having to live under the same roof, having to experience that when she's not coming home till three, four, five in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Or not even. So that was really hard. And so I don't know where I'm going with this, but I know that going through that experience was terrible. But at the same time, it actually, here's what it is, is it forced me to, it forced me to look at myself to really reflect, to think about how was I showing up before? How did I get to this place? You know, how how could this happen, right? Is a victim mindset when you're in it. It's like, how could this happen to me? And then as you dig deeper and you start to become honest with yourself, you're like, okay, shit, I could have been better here. It's different, which, you know, you can't do now. But the value of that is like leaning into it. Once you go through that pain and like, okay, well, now I know, and I'm going to do better, you know? So, mm -hmm. well, yeah. it, I, I appreciate what you're sharing here because it kind of brings up an important point, right? Like people come on this podcast and talk about their experiences and, and many times these experiences involve other people, but you're, mm -hmm. you're another coach as well. Right. So you get this, it's like, when we unpack this, we're, we're not going to worry about the other person, what they did, what they said, right. The, the experience that we're creating here is what was your experience. Right. And you says, when I asked you, what did that create for you? You, you said that so many things and you described pain, discomfort, disorientation, displacement. And then, then it also sent you on this path of starting to question everything, particularly, like you said, how was I showing up before? It sounds like it started you reflecting yep. and it sounds like that was, that was all very challenging. Yeah, it was super challenging. Um, I mean, extremely, right. I think most of us as humans, and I don't speak for the entire race here, but I feel like I have enough experience to know and say that like a lot of us don't want to deal with our own shit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, time to slow down and pause and say, okay, this is how I'm showing up or here's how I'm not showing up. And there's a lot of magic in that, but we don't do that. So that's what I mean by being forced. Like, it's almost like, I don't want to say the universe, but like, yeah, definitely my actions that led me there, but also like living so blindly, just doing like, oh, I have to be a father and I have to provide and I have to work. When then you start losing the relationship with the person you have there because you're so focused and on this, like, I have to do this, I have to do that. And you're no longer present. And that affects you later. Yeah. So. I was gonna, I'm was. i really curious about that. So take that a step further. You said it was focusing on these roles and and I wasn't present. Mm -hmm. What What is that? What does that mean? How how did that impact the relationship and and land you on this comma? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't as aware um, as I well not just today. I just wasn't aware. I was just like there was probably there no there was definitely signs, you know, and I wasn't connecting with her like mm -hmm. human to human, like heart to heart, you know. And th that love had left the room. I would say a year or two before, and I wasn't even. That wasn't even in my radar. Like I wasn't, I was like, why can't, why can't we do this? You know, why can't we? And, uh, but if I would have been more in tune with myself and more aware, I would have been able to catch that. That, 
that seems really powerful because I wonder how many of us have had that experience as well, right? What, like we find ourselves on a comma and it's a big surprise, right? Like, oh my God, the universe just put us here. But what you literally just said was in a manner of words, if I really rewind the tape, that's an old reference. Um, if I really look backwards, I put myself here or I had a, I played a part in putting myself here. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really powerful. Yeah. And, and this concept of not being aware, not being present, not really being tuned into myself. Well, I would say that the old me wouldn't, didn't recognize that. Right. Obviously. Whereas the new me is like, Oh yeah, I totally see that now. And you know, how can I show better for others? Because if I'm doing that, then I know I'm doing it for myself too. What was, so. what was the old you focused on? Cause you, you alluded to that a little bit and you spoke to it a couple of ways you weren't, you know, that you weren't present or you weren't picking up on things. You weren't tuned in because of what you were focused on. What were you focused on? Yeah. When I think of that, I think about what, for me, that was, uh, you know, attaining the goal, attaining the dream. Like this is the path you have to follow. You have to, you know, besides you have to go to work, we all do, but you know, you have to, yeah, go to work, try to get, uh, attain these goals and provide. And that was it. And I wasn't so in tune emotionally where it was mm -hmm. just like, just logic, 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 logic. And there wasn't a lot of like the emotion. If there was emotion from a, I don't want to say a man's perspective, but like the male's perspective I was like, the feeling was like, how can I get laid? You know, that was like mm -hmm. the most in tune I was then. Right. Like, I just want to satisfy myself here with you. Yeah. And that was probably the most connected I could have gotten, but it wasn't it wasn't genuine, right? It was just like, what's in it for me versus mm -hmm. how I'm going up for her. And, and you said then you were kind of missing out on things. You were missing out on signs or clues or, or signals. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, what I'm hearing is kind of detachment, dissociation, right? Um, to put the coachy words on it. But as you said, not really tuned in. And now things have shifted for you, which... Mm -hmm brings us to the third question and we'll continue to unpack this right through each of the questions but what did you learn about yourself as a result of having been on this comma yeah i love that question um yeah the reason i love that question is exactly because what was revealed to me was that i was showing up as a boy it was just me 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 uh versus showing up as a man ironically i thought i was playing the role of a man like this is what i have to do this is about to go work provide blah blah, blah. but i was still being a boy because once again like i said just not tuning in being all about me super selfish uh whiny i would say even if well fuck whew, i would say even like asking for sex you know whiny like of course she doesn't want to sleep with you. Hmm. You sound whiny, you know? And I think about like how many other men probably don't do that today still, right? It's like, well, we haven't had sex. Yet. Come on, you know? So almost, um, I, I know there's conversation about there, out there about this, right? Like almost this sense of entitlement to the sex and mm -hmm. or if you're not giving it to me, then there's something wrong with you. But I, I noticed like roles you keep bringing up roles and particularly talking about the role of the man the role of the boy the role of the spouse the role of the partner what have you what what is the importance of these roles that you're describing for you in your life well when i think of that as you bring that up i'm thinking about i immediately think about just like the programming that's been in my head probably since i was a kid like okay that's what you do right you see your parents or you see other adults like, okay, that's what you do. That's the adult. Like I assumed that going into this relationship with her, having a kid together, she would play the role of a female, you know, I'd come home, food's cooked and I'm eating and I'm, you know, like just these, all these assumptions mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and truthfully not even talking about it. Right. Because if I think about it now, I'm putting myself in that space right now. I had this assumption of that that should be done because that's how my parents were, right? But never did I bother to, to have this conversation with her. It did. It was more of like a pointing, like you're not doing this right, or you should be doing this, or it should be like this, because I assumed 
that that's how she viewed the world. Yeah. Um, just assuming, continuing to assume, right? Yeah. Well, I, I hear, you know, this, this, we talk about roles, right? And part of it was programming or training or teaching, you know, kind of how I learned it. And then you talked about kind of assumptions and expectations that like, here's the roles, here's the way I learned it. And then this just assumption that that is just the way it is. It seems as though as you moved through this relationship, a lot of the emphasis was on self. And, yeah. and I don't hear you describing it in an entitled way, meaning, well, what I don't hear you saying is, and I have a right to be this way and everybody should work around that right. What I hear you saying is, God, that's how I operated at the time. That seemed like it was the right way to go, but it sure didn't serve me. And now I know how it didn't serve me. Yeah. Yeah. You you easily could have come on here and said, well, I got screwed. And because of it, I had to change. But that's not how you approach this conversation at all. You said, this is kind of how I was. And this is what I've noticed since then. And now I see an opportunity to be a different way. No, 100%. I think, uh, well, no, I don't think I know because of that experience. Um, it just allowed me, it really was an invitation to look and dive in deeper and show up just like I'm showing up today, right? With mm -hmm. like, not the victim mindset, but like, this is what I learned. And in doing all of the work that I've done is more like, how am I showing up for others? You know, how am I showing up in this space? What's the energy that I'm carrying? Um, and is it healthy? You know, I think we tend to operate in society of uh, so much. We're so, we're living in this fast paced world and it's just all about us. Boom, 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 go, go, go. So slowing down and recognizing like, well, let's take a look at life through their lens, their perspective, and how can we coexist, right? In a sense. Yeah. Well, and you, you yourself said just a couple of minutes ago, you said, and when I serve others, I am also serving myself. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Uh, I, what I mean by that, and like I said, I operate from this heart centered space is, is really my goal and my mission and to to be able to do that and to provide the space for others where they can lean into that for themselves it helps make me feel better for me right and i'm like okay i feel good about how i'm connecting with this human um because if you peel back all the layers at the end of the day we're just humans right we're really souls inside a body and to me, the bigger picture is how do we connect at that level? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to come and go, right? So that I find value in that. There, it's it's a rich, it's a rich piece of wisdom, right? Because um, there was a lot of things in what you said, that connecting at the soul level, and and that's important because we're going to come and go. And it seems like that. It seems, and again, you jump in, correct me anywhere where I'm mis misstating anything, but. It seems like that's a direct takeaway from your relationship because your expectation in the relationship was we're together, we're together forever. And then that expectation kind of fell through when that wasn't how it unfolded. And now here you are saying, hey, we may come and go. Well, I feel like it it transcends into like everything in life, right? Whether it's my relationship with you, uh, with coworkers, you know, those are going to be limited, but are we going to, you know, continue outside of that, right? It doesn't have to be so limited to just this box. Like, how do we just show up for each other and support each other? Because I personally feel and think that's how you lift up people, you know, the world, make that, that impact one person at a time. Well, and it seems like a dramatically different way of being than how you described yourself before this comma showed up in your life, too. Yeah. And, and you're and you're smiling right now, which people can't can't see on the podcast. Yeah. The next question here, which is really kind of a good transition into or, or build on the conversation. So what's changed for you as a result of sitting on this comma that you've described? What's changed for me, I think more more recently as I'm on another comma, we'll talk about another time, but is I realize like it's not forever. It's only temporary. And you actually learn more from these situations mm. and these scenarios, even though they, they suck, right? They are like 
yeah, the dark parts, but I've learned to lean into it, right? Kind of like mm-hmm. we just talked about. It's like, okay, well, why is that there? Okay, how did this arise? Like, how did I get here, right? Okay, what caused it? What could I have done better? Okay. So now I'm just taking the time to slow down, pause, reflect, and learn from it so that if in the future something else happens, I'm stronger because of it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like speeding through life and getting consumed in whatever blocks that pain. I, I'd love to dig a little deeper into that too, because I, I, you know, I myself am a listener, right? And you said be, sometimes being on these commas can suck. These things that happen to us can really suck. They're not pleasant. They're not enjoyable and they can be shitty. And that's my word. Um, but you said, I'm learning to lean into it. And you described a couple of things, but like on a practical, like a real life in the moment level, when you're sitting on this comma and it sucks, what does leaning into it really mean for you? What does that look like for somebody who's saying, how the hell do you do that? Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a, that's a really great question. Um, you know, I appreciate that question because I'm looking back now on the tools I'm using today as I go through a comma mm-hmm. and what I learned from the last comma is like, holy shit, man, I don't have to do this shit alone. That doesn't mean people have to feel my pain, but I can create a community around me mm-hmm. uh, of people that support me, of people that love me, of people that care about me, or that just genuinely want me to see me succeed. Right. And yeah, not doing it alone and being able to reach out, like having the courage to say, Hey man, do you have a second? I just would really appreciate if you can give me like five, 10, whatever amount Mm -hmm. uh, of your time so that I can just chat through this. Right. Because a lot of the magic I've uncovered in this process is just alone, just talking about it. And I'm speaking to men really here and can apply to everybody, of course, but to men specifically, because we don't talk about stuff and we hold it in. And so that only boils up internally more and more and it makes things worse Mm -hmm. and then just blow up. So for me, it's been, like I said, leaning into it by reaching out to uh, people and, and just creating that container together with people I know I can trust. And, and that's helped me tremendously. So I, and I can see that. And you've, sh- you've shared about that with me before too. Let's take that even one step further, because I think this is important because of the intention you set. You said, I want to inspire particularly men in, in this conversation right now. So you said letting other people in, talking to people. So for another guy who's out there holding it in, going through it alone, what does that mean to to talk to somebody, to connect with somebody and let somebody in? Well, it, as I'm thinking about it, you know, first and, and foremost, I think peeling back those layers a bit further is being able to identify it, you know? So mm-hmm. I'm kind of going back here a little bit, but one of the things I've also learned is like, holy shit, I have emotions. <laughs> like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I do. I do. I, yeah, whether you want to admit to it or not, yeah. they're there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's so, so for so many guys, it's so hard. And that's what I mean by like the hard center space, because we've been taught by society to, you know, keep this place guarded. And naturally you do, right? This, when I say place, I'm thinking about the heart and we build up these layers and these walls for natural reasons. But at the same time, Just being able to identify like, oh my God, this is what I'm feeling right now. Just being that alone, just identifying it and then being, okay, even if you're just doing this exercise by yourself, like, okay, I'm feeling this. Why? You know, why? Like what brought that up? What is that tied to? Okay. Did I experience something earlier today or something in the week or whatever, or maybe years ago and that's still there. So I would say that would be the first step is just being able to self-reflect internally and Mm. know how you're feeling where you're at and then the second step which is usually the hardest is and and they say this in in other programs is like the 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 phone could be the hard the you know thousand pound phone right it's really hard for people just to pick up the phone and call someone hey how are you do you have time to talk but just yeah step one is identifying it step two is 
I would say actually identifying who could be a support uh, circle for you and then having the courage to enroll them and say, hey, really would appreciate it if, you know, I'm going through this hard time. Would just appreciate if you could just be there just to hear me out. I just need a vent. Do you have the space for that? Because you also have to ask for permission. Yeah. You can't assume people are going to like, I'm pretty sure most people will, but just have the courtesy of asking too, because it's energy. Yeah. Well, and so much stuff here, right? Which is really cool. Like, because I'm learning from your example as well. So first and foremost, can't talk about your feelings if you don't recognize them yourself. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of ramble for a minute if I will. And and, and then I'm going to invite you to jump in and kind of polish whatever it is I'm sharing. So I'm hearing you say, first of all, you can't talk about your feelings if you don't know what they are. So being able to identify your feelings yeah. and your own story is a good example of this, right? Because you can go through life saying, I don't need to be in touch with my feelings, but the other person in your life may be in tune with their feelings and they're probably in tune with your feelings. So you can't ignore it and be with somebody else because they're going to pick up on it, right? And whether that's a she, whether that's a he, whether that's a they, it doesn't matter because this isn't a men versus women thing. It's you and the other person. That's all that matters. And if that other person is in tune with their feelings, they're probably in tune with your feelings. And if you're not, there's conflict, there's friction, right? So being able to just recognize your feelings doesn't mean you have to have a PhD, doesn't mean you have to be a psychologist, right? But if you're feeling a certain way, being able to say, well, that feels like anger, or that actually feels like sadness, or I don't really know what that feels like, but it's a fucking feeling, right? So mm -hmm. I heard that. And then being able to pick up the phone and make a call, but there was something else in what you said, which is, if you're not in tune with your feelings and you're not talking about your feelings, do you have somebody in your life that you can call to talk about your feelings? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm going to make a conjecture. I'm going to, I'm whatever. I'm going to make an assumption that if you're not talking about your feelings, chances are great. You probably don't know who in your life you can talk about them with. And in order to identify who is that person you can trust in your life, you kind of have to be a little in tune with feelings because you got to know that they're safe, right? So it, yeah. it becomes a chicken and an egg type of scenario, but start somewhere. Yeah. And I think about as you're sharing that is like, if you're the opposite where let's, let's play this on the other side, right? You are that person that isn't in touch with your feelings because there's still a lot of people, right? Like that. And they deny that or whatever. They can't get into that. And, and with good I, reasons, like we're not going to demonize that. We're just going to simply say it is what it is. Exactly. And there's an opportunity there, right? What, uh, well, yeah, what I would recognize is like, even if you're not recognizing that, then, well, shit, man, how are you uh, impacting and affecting others? Because mm -hmm. whether you recognize it or not, that those feelings are in there, that's still coming out one way or another. You know, you're, you have to talk to people, right? I mean, to an extent. Yeah. It's, 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 dri it's driving drunk, isn't it? You're intoxicated. You don't feel like you're drunk, but you are putting other people at risk. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I love that. Yeah. Hector, let's let's go into the last question. You've already started answering this question, but I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to add to it or, or come at it from a different angle. So what does getting off the comma look like for you? Oof. You know, getting off the comma is one, once again, just recognizing that you're on it, being aware, like, okay, this is where I'm at right now. And I recognize it. But the best part is I know it's not going to be forever. It's just where I'm at right now. Uh, logically, here are the steps that I know I need to take to get off of that, whatever that might be, uh, job loss, relationship, uh, whatever, right? But I, I, I would say movement. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. You know, like movement, like getting that energy out, whether it's literally getting on the computer and you're like, okay, I got to go find what my solution is to say, call finding a job. You can't just stay stuck in the, okay, I'm in here. Like, no, okay. I feel it. I know it. But now what, what do I do? Uh, like I said, picking up the phone, finding friends, uh, creating a support circle, but moving, just keep it moving. That doesn't mean put these feelings away just know that they're there. Be aware. Mm -hmm. More importantly, that can give you more power to be like, all right, now I know when I feel like this, this is how I act. All right. 
right? But yeah, just get into action is what I'm trying to say. And and getting into action, and and you said any little thing, right? Something that moves you forward. What 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 do you get from getting into action or generating movement? What does that do for you? Well, for me, I, I it's just it's funny because it it's always the brain, right? It's like if I start working out, then I start feeling better, and then I start looking and having this vision of what the future is going to look like. And then I start to generate this energy within myself and I start to just do more of whether it's finding more jobs or leaning into like understanding myself more and creating a support circle of men that I can rely on. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, I'm thinking about accountability really is creating accountability for myself, uh, knowing what I need to do and then executing. Well, I hear a couple of things. You, you said movement, action, accountability, and executing. And within that, some of it is getting out of your head and into your body. Because mm-hmm. you talked about exercise and things like that and movement. And and then some of it is the taking the steps and then measuring the results, right? Um, what did you get from what you did? So hence the accountability piece. Yeah. Well, right now, when you said that too, I thought about like, the gap in the gain, right? Like I can focus on what the gap is, Mm -hmm. or I can focus on what I've gained so far Mm -hmm. and how much closer I am to what my goal might be. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. The, the gap is there, but what are you gaining as a result of it? Right. Or within it kind of the whole, um, you know, this happened to me because it means something or I can, derive or pull meaning from this thing that happened to me. Right. And neither yeah. of those is necessarily right at different angles to approach it. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to just kind of pause right there and, and highlight like, like, for example, right. I could have been like, Oh, boohoo, you know, she cheated on me or whatever. Like my life didn't turn out the way I wanted it to because of my relationship and blah, 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 blah. I can cry about it. Or I can say like I am today, like, Holy shit, man even though that was the hardest fucking part of my life, it truly was. Um, I am so much better for it now, you know, and I'm so grateful because I'm able to like, not just show up for myself, not just show up for others, but like my relationships with everyone is completely different, you know? And like, I, I hang out with her still, you know, we're, we're friends. Mm -hmm. I get along really great with her boyfriend, you know, and and, I absolutely have love for them. And I'm saying this more importantly because my intention once again is like, I see other men that don't, I see other men that go the other route and that, you know, you have to create these boundaries and I, it's only very transactional, which I get, I understand that, but you're still not dealing with your hurt. And once you deal with your hurt, then you can deal with your healing, Mm -hmm. deal with your healing, man, gets better. You know, then you feel better. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge, isn't it? Like you, you can take learning from it and you can make choices Mm -hmm. from your experience, right? Because everything is a choice. That is awesome. Hector, thank you for that. And my last question for you is, you know, you've just shared really a big part of your life with, with the world. I mean, this is going out there in the world. And so I want to acknowledge you for your, your bravery and sharing the story with us and and your honesty and your vulnerability. What would you acknowledge yourself for? I mean, yeah, the only word that's coming up for me uh, is courage, you know? Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. And you shared with us, I'm going to go ahead and and do your, your closing acknowledgements on uh, where to find you. I know anybody who's listening to this podcast can find you on Instagram at Hector Garcia coaching, and the link to that will be in the show notes. And if anybody wanted to email you directly, they can do that at connect at Hector Garcia coaching.com also will be in the show notes. And we talked like um, all my other guests you would like to acknowledge some organizations or individuals or causes that matter to you and invite others to consider supporting them, sharing their messages, or just learning from what they have to offer. So the resources you wanted to share with us are, first of all, the Rising Man podcast, which is led by Jetty Azuma and his team. A link to that um, podcast and that website, which is risingman.org. It will be in the show notes. Their mission is to initiate an entire generation of men into power and purpose 
to create a world in which all men are prepared to lead with integrity, express themselves authentically, and serve their communities. And you also wanted to recognize a couple of books that have had an impact on you. And the first one is Unfuck Your Brain by Faith G. Harper, PhD, and The Way of Men by Jack Donovan. So thank you yep. for sharing that with our listeners and 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 for putting these things out there that have had a big impact on you. Definitely. Thank you. So uh, the Rising Man podcast, uh, essentially, that's where the call out was like, are you showing up as a man or as a boy? That was such a big highlight. I'm like, shit, I never thought about that. So that's why I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. Unfuck Your Brain did a lot for me for my mental health and understanding more. And the way of men has helped me to understand leaning more into my masculinity and how important it is to create a community, community, intentional community amongst men Mm -hmm. and support each other as well. Hector, thank you for sharing that. That is, I love that extra color. So Hector, thank you. And I have very much enjoyed our conversation. I am very excited by the fact that I get to continue to have these conversations with you. Um, And, you know, it's been great getting to know you as a friend and hopefully somebody out there will be inspired by what you've shared and we'll reach out to you and you'll be able to continue these conversations with some other folks and some other brave souls as well. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I look forward to continuing and always being in touch. So absolutely. All right. Have a great weekend, Hector. Bye-bye. What an honor it is to witness these stories from these amazing human beings. And today's guest was no exception. I invite you to think about what you learned from this conversation. What stood out for you? What challenged you? What inspired you? And I encourage you to write it down in some form of journaling and reflection. I can't tell you how magical it can be to set aside your expectations and just let your thoughts flow out of your head and onto paper. You don't have to have an agenda. You don't have to do anything with it, but you can be amazed at what comes out of your thoughts and onto paper and what that can do for you. I know freestyle journaling has been a powerful practice in my life for a very long time. You just never know what you might discover about yourself. Thank you for listening to this episode of Off the Comma. Follow me on social media at Off the Comma and also look for upcoming workshops and events at offthecomma.com. Or better yet, go to offthecomma.com and sign up for my mailing list and let me bring the news directly to you. Be sure to like this episode, follow the podcast, and more importantly, spread the good word. If you were moved by today's conversation, pass it along to someone you care about. As always, keep noticing. Keep noticing.